Well, there's many ways that I can think about the Anthropocene. I study waste issues, and so for me, uh, the Anthropocene is all about waste. So here is, here is this object <laughs> that I've brought with me from, from Canada. And so it is a, it's a box, a cardboard box, and inside it is a plastic container. And inside this plastic container is this, which is a reusable straw. And I was given this as a gift. So <laughs> this is made out of cardboard that um, requires more energy to recycle than it does to landfill. Recycling paper it creates um, contaminated toxic waste. Um, it's very bad for the environment to recycle uh, cardboard. This is made out of uh, uh, various forms of plastic and it has a magnet in it so this makes this very difficult to recycle this plastic and inside it there is even a, a metal a straw cleaner, which you're, after you use it, you're supposed to clean in the straw like this. The straw itself is made out of metal, which is extracted from, uh, extracted from the earth, and it is also made out of rubber. And this rubber is made out of, uh, is made from the oil and gas industry. So, the reason I've chosen this as my object is because it, for me, is very representative of how individuals in our society are responding to the Anthropocene. They're responding with, t by taking way too much personal responsibility. So we are being told by government and by industry that this is the kind of thing that will save the planet. And if that sounds a bit too far-fetched, while I've been at this thing, I took a, <laughs> this is coffee that I had, and it's written in English. This coffee cup says, you chose green, and thank you for helping us save our planet. It also claims to be, on the side, it claims to be, this cup is biodegradable and compostable. It's neither biodegradable nor compostable but it gives me the feeling that I am doing something good for the planet and also that I'm responsible for saving the planet. As an individual, we can't save the planet. Me using this, you know, I would have to use this straw not just for the rest of my life, but for my children's lifetime and my grandchildren's <laughs> lifetime to make this an environmentally responsible item. One of the things that I think we really want to be thinking about when we think about you know, waste in the Anthropocene is how much responsibility, over-responsibility, we're taking for um, uh, saving the planet, being responsible, um, that, that the unit of social change is us as individuals, as households, as families. We're actually, the, 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 in terms of waste, most waste is produced before we ever get these things. It's produced in the production of all of these goods that we're being, that we're being told that we must have and that it's our right to have. That most of the waste is produced and most of the very toxic waste is produced before we even get these things. So not only is all of that sort of invisible to us, but then once we consume it, then we become responsible for all of this stuff doing something with it, rather than the the the, the entities that should be responsible, which is industry and government. So in Canada, for instance, where I'm studying waste issues, over 97% of the waste in Canada that's produced is produced by industry and the military. And yet they take far less responsibility for waste than do individual consumers. People really identify through recycling. It's one of the key ways, if not the key way, around the planet that especially middle class people express their concern for the environment is really through recycling. And so when people get, are told the realities of recycling, the waste that it creates, the toxic waste that it creates, that m most of the stuff that they put in recycling is actually uh, being diverted back into garbage, all of these things that recycling's only ever done if there's a profit to be made because recycling has been privatized. All of these realities, people, it's not a message that people necessarily want to hear. It's a message they need to hear, but we're not necessarily comfortable with this because 
it really is a way that people very strongly express their concern for the environment. I think people can absolutely reorient themselves and spend far less, if they take all the energy that they're currently putting into, you know, where, you know, separating out their, their garbage into recycling, if they took all that energy and re redirected it to, uh, to collectivizing, to, to, to making associations that are then demanding of governments at all levels, you know, in, in Canada we have a municipal level, we have regional levels, and we have a federal level. Governments do respond. They do respond. So I think, I, you know, I'm not a pessimist when it comes to this. I think we really can, but it, we really can affect change. But, it, but we first have to reorient ourselves that it's not, it's not the light bulbs that we use. It's not whether we use a plastic straw or a metal straw. It's, it's not what we're putting in our recycling. That isn't what's going to save the planet. What is going to save the planet is completely uh, reorienting the power structure so that, so that corporations don't own the planet as they currently clearly do. So for me, <laughs> this is one of the great uh, challenges of the Anthropocene is that we have to think about um, who is responsible for what and how we can how we can change that, how we can um, identify ourselves as, not as consumers, but as citizens, as people, and what we want as collectively, as people, not as, that our power isn't as consumers, our power should be as citizens.